Chaffin stars. Oh yeah. Let me just turn me up a little bit. Cold Coleman. Yeah, I was I was going to say that is yeah. I noticed it <laughs> earlier. It's like I'm not going to say anything because I know where you are and I know how cold it is. So anyway. Hey guys, and welcome to the last Ask Mark with yours truly. Yeah. Ooh -ooh. Ooh -ooh. Yeah. Bye, bye, Sean. Yeah. But see you later, we, guys. We we will notice that you're not here. Yeah, you will. <laughs> of course you will. The quality is going to go up. Um, it probably will because I'll probably use my good camera when it's well, me. well on this one. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you won't use your film, <laughs> uh, your phone. Anyway, so it's episode number fifty. We reached out to yeah. you guys. We were like, look, this is quite a big deal. It's my last show. And we're like, yep, yep. 50 as well. That's quite a big number. We don't, other than yeah, like yeah. the generic, generic um, videos that we do in surface interval, uh, we don't normally reach this far for like a QA. and a Normally we give up halfway through or after like three. Yeah. Um, but somehow, <laughs> somehow you guys keep on commenting. Um, so we asked, we'll do an extended edition. So this being my last mm -hmm. show, I said, oh, you know, maybe if you've got questions for me, um, it being the extended show, maybe you've got maybe more um, in, intricate is that the right word more maybe technical questions for Mark so we yeah, can you know yeah, we can different. really just hammer this episode in um, and really really you know really make something special um, you guys absolutely <laughs> and utterly disappointed us um, no ask Sean's which is fine that doesn't matter no. I'm, not, I'm, I'm yeah. not hurt about our shot don't really care about that <laughs> that's fine you don't want to know me. I totally, totally get it. This is a scuba diving channel. You don't care about YouTube <laughs> analytics or how to set up a camera. Um, mm. But you also disappointed Mark in the terms of <laughs> other questions for Ask Mark. There, there, there are some questions. that There are enough to make a show. So, um. I, yes, <laughs> I will say at least half of them, maybe uh. even more, weren't actually officially hashtag ask mark questions we no, had to delve no. into them there was only a couple ask marks um yeah. so you guys suck uh, oh. thank you i can say it now no, i, don't I care. think i think the thing yeah i know but still um no i, I think <laughs> they our audience they're pretty switched on now they, they they've run out of questions so um, you've, but no you've answered every single scuba diving question that there <laughs> is to man mark so congratulations can <laughs> you can retire <laughs> Um, so anyway, we have six questions. There is no bonus question. I was hoping there'd be a bit more meat on this this carcass, but there isn't. It's been picked clean. Um, so have fun with that in the future, Mark. No, yeah. I'll be all right. You'll, You'll be all right next week. You'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. So anyway, with that, how mm -hmm. are you, Mark? How's your week been? It's right. Friday, technically, yeah. even though yeah. we're, we're filming this a little bit later on. This is my last day on the channel. Mm. Um, but that doesn't matter. How are you? How are you feeling? Yeah. I'm all right. Uh, a little bit cold. Um, we, we've had a bit of a cold snap here. Um, no snow. There was a bit of frost, which is quite nice. Mm. Um, but um, but yeah, I had to defrost my car for the first time uh, yesterday. So yeah, tell um, me about yeah, it. I had to defrost my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Poor little fella. Yeah, <clears throat> loved it. Good man. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice though. I love it. Yeah. That it's getting colder. Yeah, it's good, mate. It's good. Cool yes. man. Right, questions? Unless you've got anything else to say? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's no, go no, straight into no, questions, no, all right? Yeah. <laughs> so, the, the first question is from John. Mm -hmm. John the Slider. Mm -hmm. Cool, nice one. Uh, are you able he to slides. change... Slide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, he says, are you able to change the latex seals out for silicon? I'm allergic to latex. Well, it depends on what it is. Is it a mask? Is it, you know, your normal jumper? <laughs> Maybe you have a latex seal on your Christmas yeah, jumper? They... No, they they were commenting on a uh, dry suit video. Um, nah. It's a matter of yes, um, this is quite a common problem, and uh, especially with dry gloves. But I'll mention that a little bit later. So, yeah, if you have a dry suit um, that has latex seals on it, and you have a latex allergy, yes, you can have them completely removed. It's better if you're getting it from like a brand new dry suit um, that's actually physically being made. They'll basically, if you want a, um, a silicone neck seal, they basically glue in a, I call it a halo. It's basically a ring that kind of goes around your neck and then you can fit a silicone neck seal to it. Um, they also do, I've seen a neoprene neck seal that can be fitted to like that silicone neck seal system. Um, so that's quite clever. And um, yeah, it, basically yes is the answer. You can have 
like either latex silicone or neoprene fitted to to dry suit either in the neck or the cuff um and yeah silicone is slowly becoming the the kind of the standard standard used to be latex but with latex allergies it makes it tricky makes it very uncomfortable um there are a few options for you uh, if you didn't want to go down that road because uh, it's it's not particularly cheap to have an, an old neck seal removed and then a new one fitted because you've got to buy the kit either do it yourself or have someone else do it um, you can use something like bio seal bio seal is quite a clever like a collar that you put on first and it's like a jelly material that covers up your neck and then the latex seal goes on that so the latex never actually touches you the same for your uh, your wrists so that is an option for you again not particularly cheap but it is quite nice um personally i just use uh, silicone neck seals and cuff seals i just like the fact that you can change them very very quickly um but yeah, when it comes to dry dry glove systems, if you're going for cold, cold waters and uh, and you want to isolate your, your hands, a lot of those are still latex or rubber latex. So uh, so trying to find a alternative is quite tricky. Um, but luckily with that, you tend to wear um, like a, an undersuit glove, as it were, a normal thermal glove underneath it. So your skin never actually touches the latex. It depends on how sensitive you are to um, to latex, but at least there's a there's a kind of barrier between you and the gloves. But short answer, yes, you can change um, sort of seals from latex seals. They basically have to cut the old one off and then glue a, a new one back onto it. Awesome. Cool, nice one, guys. Yeah. Um, if there's yeah. any other alternatives as well, and obviously men Mark mentioned BioSeal, which is awesome. Um, if you throw mm. it at windows, it does stick. Uh, I it's didn't... weird, isn't it, Sean? It, it's that, funny stuff. That's <laughs> why I got kicked out of the shop. It's like, why all the like, hundreds of pounds worth of BioSeal on the shop window or on the floor? It's like, well, I was a bit bored. Uh, Sean, we have to sell these. You're fired. Well, get in front of the camera. Uh, yeah, but anyway, if there is any other alternatives that you know that Mark did not mention, because I know this is a very popular... It's not a popular, it's a it's a known thing to happen. It's quite a common thing to happen. Um, yeah, let us know in the comments. Please comment on this video um, so Mark can continue doing Ask Mark, please. Thank you very much. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the question number dos, number two. It's from, I'm just going to say Fran, but it's like Fran Uel. Franuel. Franuel de, uh, de Mapindan. Yeah, don't just say Fran. Hey, Fran. Uh, anyway, they say, what would you do if your dive torch battery is flooded or damaged? Uh, throw away. Ooh. Out of turn. Kind of. Um, yeah, well, no, not out of turn. No, but you yeah, agreed, with, with like you modern... agreed there, Mark. I'm very sorry you agreed. <laughs> Cut, edit, that's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, that's not going to happen. It's me. No. Um, yeah, with, with modern like lithium ion batteries, you do have to be a little bit careful, um, especially with seawater because it likes to expand. And if, especially with full batteries, we, we've seen it with everything from mobile phones to um, what are those things called the, um, uh, uh, I can't remember what they're called, like segways, but without. Oh, well, oh, um, hoverboards. They? Yeah, hoverboards. Yeah. That's what um, I actually they, call them like. they tend yeah. to catch fire. Um, so far, I don't think I've ever seen a dive torch cat f catch fire, but I have. Well, you um, wouldn't. It's underwater, them. mate. That'd be a bit weird. Yeah. Oh, my dive torch is <laughs> off. Like, how? You're 40 <laughs> metres underwater. Ah! Um, I, I once did have a prototype dive torch that I was testing out that was in the Red Sea, and... Um, it, it just stopped working. Um, I didn't think too much of it. It was a uh, it was a prototype, and uh, and then when I got back, noticed there was some water uh, on the inside of it. It was a factory sealed dive torch, so it wasn't that the the O ring was damaged or whatever um, by me like putting the battery in or whatever. It it was just faulty. Mm. Um, and yeah, basically you want to isolate it as much as possible, keep it somewhere safe away from anything else that could catch fire. Um, you, you want to kind of drain it, the, the usual thing of um, sort of throw it in some rice. It, it all depends on how much um, water has ingressed. If it's just a little bit, if you can just see a bit of misting on the inside, then you might be able to get away with uh, sort of rice or some kind of desiccant to uh, to absorb that moisture. Um, but if it's catastrophic, then no, you want to isolate it, keep it somewhere very, very safe um, in like a fireproof um, 
container because that battery is going to expand. With my one, it basically popped the, um, uh, the back section of the torch out. Uh, that's why if you see on a lot of dive torches, um, you'll actually see a small sort of metal circle, which is an overpressure valve uh, on a part of it. So that way, if any water or moisture does get in and the battery does start to expand, it allows any expanding gases to escape instead of just creating a small pressurized container and making this little bomb. Um, it allows that expanding gas to escape so that then you can um, sort of unscrew it and then dispose of the uh, the battery um, sort of safely. But um, yeah, the, the main thing is, especially on a dive boat, make sure that it's somewhere safe, um, mm. ideally somewhere where someone can keep an eye on it. Um, and like be ready to yeah, jettison it if you do need to because there's, there's a lot of energy pent up in those uh, lithium ion batteries mm. and uh, and you want that to be yeah, monitored so it doesn't catch uh, sort of start a fire. They believe mm. that could have been um, the causes of the dive boat conception fire. So um, yeah, do, do be very, very careful with it. And depending on the, the cause of it, um, if you're thinking about like returning it for warranty, the um, the couriers they are not going to allow you to to ship a damaged battery, um, so no, and and do declare it um, because I was going to say you... like when you're at the post office or the DPT man, it's like yeah, it's a Barbie. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, because if something does go wrong, then yeah, that's quite serious uh, and quite dangerous, and you Is have it lied on. Is it though? Yes, <laughs> it could be. Um, so, um, so no, it is just be, be very, very careful, try and isolate it uh, and keep an eye on it um, and make sure that it, it can't start a fire, basically, because they, they will get hot and um, they can catch fire. So do be very careful with, uh, with flooded torches. That's why, guys, when I go diving, I use waterproof matches. They're fine <laughs> underwater. <laughs> <laughs> they, they last about 30 seconds yep. <laughs> mate my entire well no what I do is I, I cover my entire BCD and wing in the matches and I just like the bottom <laughs> bit and then mm -hmm. I mean, that's what they used to have that's that's actually the paddy diver logo um they're they're carrying like one of those like magnesium flares or whatever it was because cool, they would because they would burn underwater um and and that that was all they had before they had waterproof um, i think they should torches. i think they should go back to that it's much cooler well, how cooler is it like yeah let me just push a button on my torch or you just you got it on your big cd there's like a bit of rough like a match and you just go yeah i'm over here that's way cooler yeah, like, like like kevin costner in yeah uh, was it water world yeah it's no. cool <laughs> oh. Oh. No. guys are you with me they should bring back flares get rid of torches and bring back underwater flares <laughs> for scuba diving let me know in the comments below. And again, if there's anything else that you've encountered, again, that Mark hasn't said about flooded batteries, any tricks mm. and tips that you have, let us know in the comments below, please. And let's go to question number three. Uh, it's from mm -hmm. Joseph. Uh, and mm -hmm. he says, did you have a shop in Dubai? Uh, no. If we did, I did not no. know about it. Yeah, I wish. Um uh, I don't know. Is there a Simply Scuba in Dubai? Do I know there's know? a. Sim I know there are other Simply Scubas around the others. world. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's one in. Is it Thailand? Don't know. That's why I think a lot of our things we have to say <clears throat> Simply Scuba UK. <laughs> um, uh, if if there is, they they they're not coming up on the uh, the Google search. But um, no, no, we. Um, uh, Simply Scuba started as a uh, dive centre in was it nineteen ninety five, Sean? Uh, I think so. Yeah. This this is bef before I was, uh, I was ten. Sean. No, no, no. It was me. Yeah. Was, I, I was ten. <laughs> I'm that advanced. Um, no, it was it was just in in Kent in in the uh, southern UK, wasn't it, Sean? Yeah, Faversham. And, um, Faversham. And then, oh, it was actually Faversham. I believe uh, so. Then, well, it's either Whitstable, Faversham or Whitstable, one of the two, that's where it's Yeah, those are the two that, that stuck in my mind. And then eventually, uh, sort of, they, they stopped teaching and they moved more into online sales as the internet became a big thing. Most of you have heard of the internet, I, I hope. Uh, no, um, this is the first time I've ever heard of this thing. <laughs> 
um, and um, and yeah, the the company sort of grew from there. But no, we haven't. We've looked at kind of branching out and having um, sort of different simply scuba here, there, or everywhere. Um, but it has never really gone anywhere. Um, no. the, the sort of the changing world, changing economy has always been um, sort of tricky to uh, to predict. So um, so no, but no, I, I don't. I don't think we exist in Dubai. Um, I no. don't. I haven't heard of a Simply Scuba in Dubai. There, there might be one. Um, Can we even ship to Dubai? I think so, because it's yeah, yeah. I think we can. I, I mean, I don't think shipping's particularly cheap, um, but I think people in Dubai tend to have a bit of money. Um, Do they expendable income? Hmm. I, I think so. Something, something in the back of my mind says there's a fair amount of money in Dubai. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely. Do you, were you there? Were you within the company? You must have. I know you were in the company when they started talking about uh, warehouse expansion in Europe, because that was yep. exciting. And were you there when they were talking about a warehouse expansion in the USA? Yep. Yeah, and then yeah, I think there was one. In, I think they were <laughs> going to go to Egypt as well. Like it was so cool. Cause I was like, well excited. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there, there were quite a few plans and contingencies and uh, sort of looking at uh, yeah, sort of was... actual spaces. Um, but yeah, nothing ever actually happens just because, yeah, the world just kept changing every time we came up with this plan. And because with, with Brexit and everything, we were like, oh, okay, well, yeah, let's let's look at, um, uh, yeah, an actual sort of space in, in Europe. Um, but then, of course, all, all the capital is, is being sort of saved and can't be reinvested. And it is just, ugh, yeah, it was tricky. Yeah, <coughs> no, ne- never actually happened. No, and the, that was in even then. That was the old. It's not the team that run it now. It's a completely different team. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, no. So we don't have a. And in answer to a lot of people that keep mentioning, are we going to have a shop? Because that's not every other comment, but there's still people asking about one our fashion yeah, shop a, a and physical, a physical physical, physical shop. Um, no, <clears throat> that will never happen. I don't think so. Um, no. Unfortunately, <laughs> the company that owns Simply Scuba is all about online and online only they're an online presence yeah. we will only be an online yeah. presence um yeah so like dive shows literally and stuff called like the that. internet fusion, fusion group yeah. so um yeah it's all about online it's, it's yeah. not their business model to have a yeah. uh, physical uh, uh, and we probably won't be showing up at um well i certainly won't be showing up because i have three days <laughs> left with the company uh uh, at any dive show, it, well, we, we could do, but it might be like a, 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 either a talk or you know, just Mark wandering around by himself going, Hello, hello. <laughs> it won't be a it's physical, simple, yeah, <clears throat> it's not a st- physical, simply scuba shop that we used to have at these concert, uh, concerts, uh, events. That's the word I want to yeah. say, anyway. Yeah, so hopefully that answers you. Um, and if you want to open up your store in Dubai, call it Simply Scuba, send us some pictures. Um, we won't yeah. see you because, well, I won't see you because I don't care. Um, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> let's just move on. So, next question is from um, Michael. Hello. He yeah. says, What about the fins? So, this was a comment on the Scuba Tips fin series, uh, which went live. Okay. Was, it, was it this week that went live? I don't know. I, Bruce, yeah. I, I yeah. stuck it them up. <clears throat> I stuck them up. There'll be a, a link time. popping up. <laughs> Stop it! Giving Sean Sean a bit more work. <laughs> Please don't. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad enough. This this talent. I I'd planned. Oh, nice nice chilled last week. Do some bit. Yeah, that's not happening, is it? That's certainly not happening. I'm doing more work now than I ever have before. Um, I mean, I was always busy internet fusion. Um, not that I care. Uh, anyway, get back to the actual question. Uh, Michael says, "What about fins uh, with a channel?" I posted a link to the Mares page in another one of your fin videos, but it got deleted. Question mark. Yeah, links uh, are still filtered out. If, yeah. if you post a link in, in one of our YouTube um, uh, sort of comments, YouTube filters it out. Yeah, so we um, either accept it or if you did it when we weren't here. So if there was, if you posted it when we had the, the hiatus, um, after <coughs> 60 days or after 30 days, they all get deleted It'll anyway. Delete so it, yeah. yeah, they, yeah. What happens. Sorry. Or if YouTube think it's a, a dodgy link, they just won't even show us. They'll just remove yeah. it completely. Anyway, uh, you didn't mention that the strong current and soft fins are rubbish. So, Mark, your thoughts about this and channel fins and soft fins yeah. and currents? Yeah. I'm I'm guessing yeah. he's talking about currents of water and not the things that we eat, like dividing them up. 
<laughs> no, um, yeah, so channel fins. You, you basically get, a, get different styles of fins, and one of them is channel, or at least I call them channel, which is where you typically have a, a mixture of sort of rigid material, a flexible material, a strip of rigid, and then a strip of uh, sort of uh, flexible. So the, the overall shape of the blade can kind of create more of a scoop at, at different parts of the fin kick. So it catches water and it channels it towards the, uh, the tip. Um, yeah, they, they are quite effective. Um, in strong current soft fins, so this is almost different. Um, so you get different stiffnesses of blades. And I think I must have touched upon it on, uh, on that video. And yeah, you get soft blades, which are soft um so they do bend no and, and flex. go go figure uh we're not imagined to with our names but yeah <laughs> they're very soft and flexible so they they don't use up a lot of energy from your legs but of course it's proportional so you don't get a lot of oomph um sort of through them whereas if you go for like a medium or a stiff blade which are harder um then yeah they they use more energy from your legs but because they're stiffer they they really force you through the water so yeah if you're trying to fight a current you want a stiffer blade but if you want a nice chilled out relaxing dive then you go for a softer blade it's it's primarily used with sort of free diving and spear fishing because they tend to spend like hours and hours and hours in the water. And if you're wearing a, a pair of hard blade fins in the water for hours and hours, it's just gonna kill your legs. Hard, stiff blades are best for short periods or training, so training specific muscles. The middle one is that kind of Goldilocks, it's in between, so you get a decent amount of propulsion, but it's not taking too much energy out of your legs. But for long dives, you want kind of a soft blade so it's not just decimating your legs. You're not gonna get there quite as fast, but you will eventually get there and it's not gonna take up too much energy. So yeah, it's fins, try and see them as like a tool for a job and you have multiple tools for different jobs. So if it is just a nice chilled out relaxing dive, you have like a soft pair of fins or something relatively small. If you want something for pure power and efficiency or training, then you want like a stiffer fin. Uh, or if you only want one pair of fins, go for something down the middle. It's, um, that, that that's kind of it. Channel, channel is just a, a slightly different design. It does make them a bit more flexible, but um, they, they do the job. I mean, one of the most popular pair of fins in the world is the Mars Avanti Quattro, and they're a channel fin, or at least what I would call a, a channel fin. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're, they're a tool for a job. Um, You're a tool you for a job. Hey. You kind of have to make your mind up which one is uh, is best for you and the uh, the diver hand. Cool, man. Sorry, I've got to get these out, guys. I've got another 10 years worth of hey, interrupting stuff. Hey, <laughs> the, the, this week's deco stop is just going to be going, hey, that's what she said. <laughs> Scuba diving It'll sucks. Like director's commentary. It'll be an additional <laughs> audio track that you can just put on it. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, mamma mia. Anyway, cool, man. Um, do you guys and girls have thoughts about travel fins? What do you, are you a soft, are you a medium, are you a hard? Or in the 4K world, that's SD, HD, and 4K. 4K. Let us know <laughs> in the comments. Yeah, so if you want the RK3, so it's the Apex RK3, but if you want it hard, it'll be the Apex the RK3. HD. No, 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 HD's medium. If you want it hard, it is the Apex RK3 4K. SD soft, give, medium is give HD. It, give it a couple of years, they might come out with a with a stiff uh, 4K blade. That can slight, like it's stronger and harder than a <laughs> samurai sword. <clears throat> it, can, it will cut the, um, cut the heads off of great white sharks. It's that stiff. <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, swiftly moving on. Yeah, what, what's your poison? Pick your poison, let us know down below. Um, right, next question is from Frank or Franco, mm -hmm. or his full name, Franco the guy. Hey, Frank, Franco, or, Franco the guy. Or, or Fran, Fran Koth guy. Yeah, it could Koth, be, could be. Fran Koth. Koth. Koth guy. Frank, we're, we're going to call you Frank. <laughs> talk to Frank, talk to Frank. Anyway, Frank says, 
hey guys love the videos cheers bruv thank you uh did you hear about the AVO, a Avelo, Avelo system? Um, mm, I'm really skeptical mm. about it, and I'm wondering if you know more about it. I'd love if you we could do a video about it. We don't it. like change. <laughs> Tell me about yeah. it, mate. The online drama of just changing a strap. Or, oh, wireless charging. Oh, what's this? It's preposterous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Avelo or Avelo. I, I don't think I've actually heard it um, sort of pronounced out line. Um, or, or out loud, sorry. The first I heard of it, I think, was a, a scuba Reddit post where they just posted like a teaser video, but with no explanation. So what it was is was just a video. There was like a guy pulling a what looked like a, a cylinder off of a um, off of a shelf, and then they they cut to like scuba diving, and it's basically scuba diving. And he wasn't wearing a BCD. He was wearing like a harness with a cylinder on the back, and he had two small canisters like either side of it, um, and and that was kind of it. So um, so I didn't really sort of know what it was because there was no explanation. Um, and um, it's that I think they were at Dima, and uh, and they did show a lot of people. It's quite a clever system from what I've seen, and it's like a. Uh, a neutral buoyancy system without using a BCD. So what those two little canisters either side of the cylinder does is they basically pump water into like the, the it's hard to explain that <laughs> the, the, basically the cylinder has uh, a separate I do know, it and do it um, in Japanese come on Ohio um, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so the cylinder has kind of two chambers on the inside, one that contains your breathing gas and then one that can be filled with water. They they kind of use the um, uh, analogy that it's a bit, a bit like how submarines work. They work by pumping seawater into these chambers and that's what adjusts the buoyancy of the overall system. System itself is positively buoyant, so when it's got all the water pumped out of it, you float on the surface, which is quite nice, but then when you want to descend, you basically push a button and then one of the pumps pumps water into this kind of internal chamber and that adjusts your buoyancy and then after a few seconds it achieves neutral buoyancy so then you can swim around you can swim up you can swim down if you just stop swimming you just hover in place because you are truly neutrally buoyant That's um cool. and then yeah and then you push another button and it kind of pumps the water out um it's one of those things they they say they've done like thousands of uh, of dives with like entry level divers and uh, an instructor level like professional level divers. Um, so th they've done lots of testing. It's not going to market yet. So I think the last projection they uh, they said it was um, 2023. They're looking for it to like start entering the market. It's clever. Um, I'd like to get my hands on one just to uh, sort of see how it ticks, see how it feels in the water and what it does. Uh, I think they do, I think there are actually like a training agency as well because it's a very different way of, uh, of diving. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's clever, it's interesting. And, um, and it is just one of those things where if they do it right, this could be the, the kind of the future of scuba diving. Um, I don't like I it. Think no. Well, <laughs> well, um, I think one of the things is is that it's a like electric motor that's like pumping the water backwards and forwards. So you're relying on that um, and a few other things. So um, it's 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 going to take a while before and if it becomes mainstream. But it's it's interesting. It's definitely one to uh, to keep your eye on. Um, so yeah, yeah. Abilu, um I yeah. think you, you need this sort of tech to push things forward. This probably isn't the future, but something that this will create will lead towards mm. something else potentially that will be. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's taken about a million years for scuba divers just to start embracing a strap for a mask. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, the um, uh, it depends which company uh, is doing it, but like the Aqualung i3, um, I think it was Mares called it the air trim. Um, but instead of having a corrugated hose over your left hand shoulder, you just have a little flicky switch on your hip. Um, that's a marvelous system, but it's really hard to get that integrated into the market because well, it's not 
what my instructor used, so no, I'm not going to stay away from it. Um, it's a very clever, clever system, but it is really hard to make these relatively small changes uh, mm. to the diving industry and make them stick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's hey. tough. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to keep my eye on them. They um they they it's a clever concept and yeah, I I'd, I'd like to see more and actually get my hands on one to see how it functions. Awesome. Uh mm. have you seen one in the flesh? Somewhere out there must have done. Have you They're played around demon, with so, it? Yeah. Have you yeah. had a play? Let us know your thoughts about it in the comments please um and yeah is it the future uh i'm gonna say no um but it will lead Aww. towards something I th yeah, yeah it will lead towards <clears throat> something i think personally mm -hmm. um but yeah hey hum and the last question of episode 50 the last question mm -hmm. that i'm gonna read or should i say read slash butcher um <laughs> is from a fellow sean so, well done, Sean. Uh, he says, Wanting advice on cave diving. I recently completed my tech dive training and want to know the best routes into cave diving training in the UK. Do you know any diver agencies okay. that offer training or local cave diving hotspots? Many thanks. Yeah, uh, I think one of the, the usual things is look for an instructor more than agency. Um, but no, I mean, just hit Paddy. We... Paddy are the best. They're the best. <laughs> uh GUE are are usually the the uh like cave diving because they were I think they were developed from the YKPP project or YKPP <laughs> yeah project. I remember that <laughs> Uh, which is which is all about um, sort of cave diving here in the UK. We have the I think they are just called the Cave Diving Group, the CDG. Um, so yeah i think a lot of that's more sort of north country but there's there is a surprising amount of uh, sort of cave diving here in the uk it tends to be quite muddy um but of um, but yeah if you if you want to get into it uh yeah contact those guys and um yeah, the, the best instructors are the ones that actually do it themselves like recreationally not someone who just teaches the course um so yeah, uh, sort of look up the uh, the cave diving group. I think it is just cdg.co.uk or something. Um, yeah, they're those boys and girls. They they know what they're talking about. Uh, otherwise, yeah, GUE because they they are quite strict <clears throat> about their uh, like instructor programs. It's it's not just uh, yeah that's that's good enough stamp um they they really put you through your paces to uh, to become a gue instructor especially like cave instructor and the whole like organization about it is very strict it is basically where dir comes from and um and it's very much <clears throat> through multiple multiple evolutions of making sure the equipment and the procedures is done sort of correctly they found the most efficient way of doing each of them and and that is now the way they do it and everyone is very sort of uniform um <clears throat> but yeah here in the uk yeah just sort of have we, we do have some great instructors around um so yeah sort of ask around and uh, sort of spend some time with them don't don't go for just the first instructor that you uh, that you find kind of have a chat with them sort of get get used to them make sure that you trust them and uh, sort of see how they uh, how they function uh, and then sort of go down that route but um no yeah, you are... just have to make sure they have loads of paddy cards don't you the cert cards <laughs> the, the, yeah more more cert cards they got there yeah. you go done the more, they must the more, be better yeah <coughs> damn straight <laughs> guys and girls, you, are you a part of a clique? Are you part of a club that goes cave diving in the UK? Can you help Sean out? Let us know in the comments below. Um, if you do have uh, a link to a club or something, put it in the comments. But like we mentioned earlier, it will get through to, filtered through. So it will go into spam. Yeah. Um, but then uh, the team... Give it a few team, days. Because it won't, won't be me, mate. Um, will no. either approve it or delete it. So, yeah, just... just just yeah, just stick it all below. Um, and I'll put I'll pin a link to the cave guiding, cave diving CDG. guild. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll put that in the comments. CDG. Yeah, cool. I'll find it. If not, it's not there. So cool. Uh, yeah, that's it, Mark. Episode fifty cave, is done. Cave diving group dot org dot uk. Oh wow, um, cool, cool. Yeah, there you go. 
Wicked. Well, you should find that <laughs> in the comments below uh, for you to go check out. But that is it. That is Ask Mark number mm -hmm. 50 done. That is my last ever episode of Ask Mark. Yeah. As a presenter, you never know. I might come back as a guest. <laughs> Hope. Maybe. Probably not. I will not be allowed back. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. new, new, new YouTube channel. Who dis? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent, mate. Um, yeah, so, so that, that's it. Do, do the usual, Mark. Do the usual. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if you have any questions uh, regarding scuba diving, um, just let us know down in the comments below, especially if you're new to scuba diving. Welcome. Hi, how are you? Um, yeah, Don't do it, guys. It's a trap. It sucks. About, scuba diving is rubbish. <laughs> about equipment, uh, procedures, anything, let us know down in the uh, down in the comments below. Uh, if you really want to be featured, then use the hashtag AskMark, so all one word, A-S-K-M-A-R-K. -A -A um, at the beginning or the end of your, uh, your comment, just makes it a lot easier for us to find them. Um, yeah, don't forget to check out simplyscuba.com. Uh, we sell all sorts of interesting scuba diving equipment. Um, but yeah, that's it for Ask Mark. Thank you for watching, everybody. And of course, safe diving. Stay classy, scuba divers. And before I go, uh, my final episode of Deco Stop, that is my last ever official live-ish yeah. episode, will go live. So <laughs> if you want to, yes, if you want to join in on that, um, what I am going to ask Mark as well, so get your thinking cap on, Mark, is general updates for the channel after its its after its favourite producer has left, um, after oh, okay. it's yeah. it's dead. Yeah. So if you want a general updates to potentially ask Mark or anything like that, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing that to Mark on uh, on Friday, so you can listen to that on Saturday morning as a podcast, or again it goes live as a video Sunday morning for you guys and girls. So yeah, keep an eye out for that as well. Anyway, yeah, mm -hmm. stay classy, scuba divers. Mm -hmm.